The warmest of greetings to you. Who are you? I am your storyteller, Chip. And you know what it's like when you're really hungry. It's not a nice feeling, is it? No, it's, it's even worse if you're really hungry and there's food right there, but you're not allowed to eat it. Isn't that an even worse feeling? That's the kind of feeling that the little girl in this story had. She was about the same age as you, and she had some food right there that she couldn't eat because if she did, she would anger a giant. And you don't want to get on the wrong side of a giant, do you? The girl in this story was called Tutumu, and Tutumu lived on the island of Java in Indonesia. And pretty much every single morning was the same. She would wake up, and she would choose one of her three dresses to wear. She only had three dresses because her mum couldn't afford any more. And then she would take her hair and put it in a huge bun and stick it there with a pin that's about as long as your arm. She had to put her hair up in a bun because her mum couldn't afford for her to have a haircut. And then by now she would be feeling really, really, really hungry. So she would go into the kitchen ready for breakfast. Work. Didn't have any time for breakfast. They had to get doing some work. Before the giant came, now Tutumu's first job was to go out into their farm and start pulling up loads of vegetables and bring them back to her mum in the kitchen. And her mum would start chopping them up, ready to put them into a huge pot to make a huge stew. This was a pot that filled up. Half of the kitchen. That's how big it was. And you're absolutely right. This was going to be a pot of stew for the giant. Yeah. But the mother would take four cups, four cups to dip into that stew. Take out just four cups of stew for her and Tutumu. Two for the mum, two for Tutumu. She put two of those into the cupboard and hid them there so that they could have them later. And then, around about lunchtime, Tutumu came back into the kitchen and had her one cup of stew, and Mum had her one cup of stew. But of course, they were really hungry. That wasn't going to fill them up. But they had more work to do. After they'd had their lunch, Tutumu's mum would take the vegetables that were left over down to the market. Had to go down to the market and sell some vegetables to get some money for things they needed around the house, like well, more seeds to grow more vegetables. While her mother was gone, Tutumu's job was to pull the plow across the farm. Do you know what a plow is for? Yeah, cutting those deep holes in in the fields for you to put the seeds in. A plow kind of looks like a wheelbarrow. But it's got a big blade on it, and instead of pushing it, it's easier to pull it. So you leave a big long hole behind you. So you can imagine that, if you like, just holding onto a plow and pulling it forward across a farm. And this would take her the best part of the afternoon. And after going along like this, straining really hard, she would just get to the end, feeling really, really hungry. When her whole body would start to wobble, that's it. Just like that, her whole body would wobble with every step in the distance. So she would take that plow to the shed, and as she was putting it into the shed, her whole body would start to jiggle. With every step in the distance, there'd be some jiggling, and then she would run into the kitchen. And by now, she would be bouncing. With every step, she would be bouncing, because from the distance came the, the giant. giant. Now Tutumu didn't want the giant to see her, so she would hide under the table. But she would be able to hear the giant, even though she had no idea what he looked like. She would be able to hear him, because he would call her name. He would say, "Tutumu." 
Where are you? And Tutamu did not want the giant to know that, so she would just call out, I'm here. She didn't want him to get angry. And then the giant would say, Tutumu, where's my stew? You don't want to get on the wrong side of me. And so Tutumu, again, not wanting to make the giant any more angry, would say, it's in the kitchen. Then Tutumu would hear a rip as the roof of her house was torn off. She would hear a clank as the giant picked up that huge pot. She would hear a <laughs> as the giant gulped it down. She would hear a crash as the pot was put back in the kitchen. And then everything would start to bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. And then jiggle, then jiggle, then jiggle, then wobble, then wobble as the giant disappeared into the distance. Tutumu stayed under the table until her mum came back from the market. Only then did she know it was safe to come out. And after she came out, that's when they got to have the best part of the day. They had their second cup of stew. And then mum went out into the field to sow the seeds into the, all of the holes that Tutumu had dug with the plough. And Tutumu skipped along behind her with a watering can to water all of those seeds. And this was the time of the day where they could share stories with each other and sing songs to each other. I can see you getting really excited about that. This would be your favorite time of the day as well, wouldn't it? It almost made them feel like they, they weren't hungry anymore. They could completely forget about that until it was over and it was bedtime. Tutumu had done all that hard work during the day, but she'd only had two cups of stew. How hungry do you think that would make you feel? Very Pretty hungry. hungry. So Tutumu always went to bed hungry. And she woke up the next morning even hungrier. But like I said, every day was the same. Still, Tutumu and her mum thought it couldn't get any worse than that, could it? until yes. the day when it got terrible. You saw this coming. This was the day when Tutumu woke up and again, she chose one of her three dresses to wear because her mum still hadn't been able to afford a new one. She then did up her hair and stuck a pin in it that was as long as your arm with your fingers stretched out because she still hadn't had a haircut. And then, she was so hungry, she rushed into the kitchen, ready for work. work. Yeah, remember the work. She had to do some work because they had to get everything done before the giant came. Into the field she went, pulling up vegetables as normal. She was a bit slower than usual because she'd been getting hungrier and hungrier, but she still had to go out and pull up the vegetables. <laughs> Mum was still <coughs> chopping the vegetables to go into that huge pot of the stew for the giant. But she also got four cups, two for her and Tutumu to have for lunch, the other two to hide in a cupboard somewhere. And after they'd had their lunch, off went mum to the market while Tutumu went out and got the plow and started dragging it through the fields, cutting nice deep holes in the fields for the seeds to go in later. And as she was Pulling it along, she began to wobble. With every step in the distance, there was a little wobble. The giant was early, or, or maybe Tutumu was late. She, she wasn't sure, but she had to rush. She quickly took the plow over to the shed and threw it in and shut the door. She began to jiggle. And as the plow went in and she shut the door, she heard a clank. That didn't sound good. But Tutumu didn't have time to worry about that. She had to go back into the kitchen and under the table just as she was beginning to bounce. And as she hid under the table, she heard the words, Tutumu, where are you? 
And as usual, Tutumu didn't want the giant to find her, but she didn't want to make him angry either. So she said, I'm here. And then the giant said, Tutumu, where's my stew? You don't want to get on the wrong side of me. And Tutumu said, It's in the kitchen. Well, the giant ripped off the roof. Then there was a clank as he picked up that huge pot. And then glug, 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 he gobbled it down. Then crash, down went the pot. Foop, went the roof back on top. And everything started to bounce and bounce and bounce as he stepped away into the distance. And then it was jiggling, that's it. Thank you for reminding me. And then it was wobbling. And then it was still until Tutumu's mum came back from the market. But when Tutumu's mum came back, Tutumu came out from under the table, desperate to see what that clank was when she put the plough back into the shed. And when they went to the shed to check, they found the plough in pieces. This meant that they weren't gonna be able to dig the holes for the seeds to go in quite so easily. But it was going to be much, much harder to do any work and get the right amount of vegetables. But Tutumu's mum told her not to worry. All they needed to do was go without food a little for a little while so that they could sell more vegetables at the market and save up more money to buy a plough. Plows were really expensive, but they were very important. So it might take a couple of weeks of eating absolutely no food, then they'd be able to get everything back to normal. Still, they went and did a little bit of seed sowing and a little bit of watering and a little bit of singing, trying to be as, as happy as you like to be. But it was gonna be the last time they felt like that for a very long time. It was gonna be a last mug of stew that they would have for a very long time. And Tutumu went to bed that night, both hungry and worried. For the next few weeks, they would go out into the fields to pull up the vegetables, chop them up, put them in that great big pot. But they had nothing for lunch. And while mum went off to the market to sell the vegetables, well, Tutumu didn't have anything to do because there was no plough to pull anymore. She just was desperately trying not to think of food. And that's really hard, isn't it? When you're getting really, really hungry, all you can think about is food, isn't it? Food, food, food. That's all you can think about. She woke up in the morning and the first thing she thought was food. Then she needed to, to pick one of her, her three food. She needed to, no, dresses. She needed one of her three dresses. And then she would get her hair into a nice big food, food, bun, bun, food. And then she would go down to the kitchen ready for work. food. No, work, you're absolutely right. Yes, yeah, she needed to work. She'd go and pull up all of the vegetables and her mum would chop them up and put them into that great big pot. And off she would go to the market with the spare vegetables to try and save up money for a plow. And Tutumu would try desperately not to think of food. Food, she really wanted some food. And there was this huge pot of food right there in the kitchen. She tried to think of something else something that she really, really loved, a puppy. She really wanted a puppy. Anybody here got a puppy? Anybody here want a puppy? Yeah, no. maybe, maybe want some other animal. She just wanted to have someone small and cuddly to, to love and food. She really wanted some food and, and a puppy. She would have a puppy who, of course, she would take for walks and play with and give food share food with she really needed some food and there was this giant pot full of food and surely the giant wouldn't notice a teeny tiny little girl sized portion of food just one mouthful of food from that huge pot he's not going to notice that is he Tutumu needed to have some food, if only to take it off her brain before the giant got there. So she climbed up to the top of that pot and she did. She took just one mouthful 
Oh, food and oh, it was so good, so good. He wouldn't notice if she'd had two little girl sized mouthfuls. You know, do you? You know what this I is think coming I to? Do. He wouldn't notice if there was three. She probably wouldn't notice if there was four little girl mouthfuls, but as I'm sure you're expecting, it wasn't long before half of the cooking pot had been eaten by Tutamu. Not all of it, of course, because that would be crazy. She would explode. But by the time she got about halfway down, she began to wobble. And then she began to jiggle. With every step, she was beginning to jiggle. And Tutamu panicked, she got under the table and she began to bounce with every step and heard Tutumu, where are you? Tutumu didn't want the giant to find her, but she also didn't want him to get angry, so she said, I'm here. And the giant replied, Tutumu, where's my stew? You don't want to get on the wrong side of me. And Tutumu replied, it's in the kitchen. <laughs> so then she heard the rip as the roof came off. She heard a roar as the giant saw that the pot wasn't full. Then she heard a shatter as the giant knocked the table away. And Tutumu was looking up at the giant for the very first time. She thought there couldn't be anything worse than that. But she was very quickly proved wrong because the giant reached down, grabbed Tutumu, threw her into his mouth and swallowed her down. She's still alive. And Tutumu landed with a splash in his stomach, feeling very, very sticky and very, very smelly and very very stupid she couldn't believe what she had done she had allowed herself to eat that food and now the giant had eaten her she was probably never going to see her mum again she was definitely not going to get a puppy now how could she get out of this she buried her head in her hands Ow. But of course, as she did that, she poked her hand with her hairpin. Remember the hairpin that's as long as your arm with the fingers stretched out? Yeah. Ooh. That hairpin gave Tutumu oh. an idea. Yeah. <laughs> she took the pin out from her hair, went up to the slimy, meshy wall of the stomach and poked it and poked it and outside the giant was about to start walking home when he felt a stab of pain in his stomach and then another one and, and another one and with every stab of pain his feet came up and kicked up some of the mud right there in the field. And he stamped around in the field, churning up the mud, creating hole here, hole there, as every single stab made him jiggle and move around. That's what Tutumu's mum came back from the market to see a little bit later, see the giant stomping around like crazy. And when she saw that, she straight away called, Tutumu, where are you? And the giant replied, She's in my belly! Get her out! Well, Tutumu's mum was, as I'm sure all of your mums would, she knew exactly what to do. She told the giant to lie down. And then she got onto his belly, right on the belly button, and she got ready to jump up and sit down hard. So maybe you can do this, you can sit down as hard as you can, ready. And as she did that, out from the giant's mouth popped Tutamu, landing safely in some bushes nearby. 
And even though she was slimy and stinky with the juices from the giant's stomach, Tutamu's mum was so pleased to see her alive, she went over and gave her a huge hug. The giant was thinking about eating them now. The giant stood up, thinking that he was going to have another go, and this time he was going to chew. But what he didn't expect was the mother to look up at him and say, Thank you! Thank you so much! Why? What? Yeah, the giant was rather confused by this and looked down at the mother. And as the mother explained, you are absolutely right, the giant had made loads of huge holes around the field. They didn't need a plow anymore. They just needed the giant to make the holes in the field with his feet. This meant that they would still be able to make the stew for all of them to eat, including the giant, of course. And it meant that they didn't have to worry about wasting all of their money on a new plow. And that is exactly what happened. From that day on, the giant and Tutamu and Tutamu's mum all worked together. The giant eventually realized that Tutamu and her mum deserved to have a little bit more stew so that they could work more effectively there in the field, growing the vegetables to cook his stew and make more money in the market. It meant that they were able to have a lot of fun at the end of the day. The giant stomping through the field to make the holes, the mother going along behind him to sow out the seeds, Tutamu going along with her watering can and trotting along behind them. What do you think they spent their money on? A dog! The puppy trotting along behind them, singing their songs, playing their games and living pretty happily for the rest of their Exactly. I really do love that story. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. I think it's really one of my favourites. But I'd love to know what you thought. So please look for where it says review and follow the instructions to let me know your thoughts. And while you're there, why not have a go at our epic challenge? If you send your creativity to me, I may well jump on a video call with you. Now, if you're an epic explorer, you can now enjoy another story about a much kinder boss than the giant, but this time it's the people working on the farm who get a bit mean. If you're not an epic explorer yet, then head to fablespodcast.co.uk to find out how to become one. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. <laughs>